Hello, uh, this is Narain single phase control starter model Eco ODYLR. This is a control starter which can be used for all single phase submersible pumps. Uh, this Eco ODYLR is available for 0.5 HP, 1 HP, 1 1.5 HP and 2 HP single phase submersible pumps. So uh, this starter is a pretty compact starter and a digital starter wherein this uh, gives the protection to the motor against overloading dry run. It has a built in off timer wherein the motor switches off automatically after the set time. Then it also comes with a facility of tank overflow of like if you that is optional again. If you choose that option we would be providing two sensors along with the starter. You will have to draw the sensors all the way till the overhead tank. So whenever the water fills up in the overhead tank then the motor automatically switches off. And the important feature about this starter is it has an LCD display wherein it will uh, give out a complete uh, reason for switching off the motor. So let us uh, go ahead and have a look at what exactly overload is, what exactly dry run is. So any single phase submersible motor uh, has to uh, take some load when the motor is running. So let us assume it is a 1.5 HP motor. A 1.5 HP motor is designed to take around 9 to 10 ampere load while running. So similarly overload usually happens when uh, the motor which is running freely gets jammed for some reason. It may be because of the uh, silt deposition or uh, the weak windings or low voltage conditions or anything else. Then uh, the motor begins to draw more current than it has to. A, nine ampere, a motor which should draw around 9 ampere will uh, start drawing around 15 or 20 amperes. So that is when if the motor is left to run in that condition for a long time then the motor coils get burnt and the motor gets damaged. So. So what the starter does is, once the overloading happens, this immediately turns off the motor in 12 seconds time and it gives out a reason for turning off the motor, thereby the motor windings won't get burnt. So you can always lift the motor, check what the problem is and you can put it back. You need not spend on the rewinding costs. Then let us come to dry run. What exactly dry run is? All single phase or any submersible motor is designed to run, designed to be inside water. So it, they're all water cooled motors, so they'll have to be inside water. Whenever the motor starts to run without the water, so whenever the water levels are low, that is when uh, the motor begins to run without water. So that is when uh, there won't be any cooling and the windings get heated up which results in motor burning. So that is called as dry running. So what this does is it has digital current sensors which keeps uh, sensing the current. So whenever a motor begins to run dry, a 1.5 HP motor again which should draw around 9 ampere, when it runs without water it will start drawing around 6 ampere or 7 ampere which is way lesser than what it has to draw that is when that is how we sense dry run and we immediately cut off the motor once dry run happens so and again uh, the dry run uh, cut off time is 8 seconds and it will trip the motor and give out a display give out the message on the lcd display it will give out uh, the message as dry run off similarly we have an off timer see this off timer is specially designed to avoid the wastage of water especially when uh, the water is getting pumped to the overhead tank we see the motors running uh, the overhead tanks getting filled and water overflowing out of the tank. So that's what uh, we thought like we should provide a sensor uh, built into the starters wherein you will set a specified time you know you can set the time between 1 minute to 120 minutes so suppose if you want the motor to run for only 30 minutes you can always set that time. So you will be turning on the motor manually so once that time is up then motor automatically switches off. So thereby you you are not uh, you are making sure that the motor is off after a set time so you need not wait for turning off the motor. So anywhere in between that time whenever there is overload or dry run uh, the starter takes care of uh, the motor safety features as well and an additional feature which I said which is called as tank overflow off uh, if that option is choose, chosen so we will uh, give two additional uh, bullet sensors along with this one which has to be connected all, all uh, to uh, the overhead tank and I will be showing you how to make those connections as well. So once the, those sensors are connected and the overhead tank fills up when the motor is running the motor immediately switches off and gives out a rating as tank full off. So this is uh, just about the starter. Now let's go ahead and have a look at its build quality. This is pretty compact in size and this has an MS uh, outer uh, casing which is uh, ivory in color and uh, you have this LCD display and below the display you can see three knobs which are used to uh, set the values. Then you have motor on indicator here. Then uh, you have the manual motor on and off push buttons. So once you open the uh, door there, here you can see uh, the uh, uh, the main control unit. This control unit is easily replaceable. We would also provide the connectors and uh, the connections uh, for these particular wires have been mentioned on this control unit. So this can be easily replaced just in case if there is any problem. Then these are the back of uh, start and stop push buttons. Then uh, on the right hand side you can see uh, the starting and running capacitors. This is a two pole contactor and this is a CT coil here. 
then this is the main termination. So this is a 5-way connector wherein the first two connectors are incoming phase and neutral. This is where the connections has to be made. These are the incoming supply. These are uh, bigger wires because all these carry power supply. And then the RYB cables are the motor cables. I repeat, the first two connections are the incoming phase and neutral and the next three cables are the motor cables, RYRB. So this, these are the only five wires which has to be connected and again if you choose for the option of tank overflow off, this package comes along with uh, these two bullet sensors. These two bullet sensors, uh, every bullet sensor has this bullet and a wire. Similarly, uh, you get uh, a pair of bullet sensors. This has to be placed on the overhead tank. Let us assume this is the tank. This is the floor of the tank and this is, this is the height of the tank. So how you will have to place sensors is the first sensor should be placed at the bottom most point that is on the floor of the overhead tank and this wire has to be uh, given to one of the uh, terminations here the last two connectors so the bottom most point comes to this particular connector and uh, the second sensor which is sens second sensor has to be placed at the top most point this is almost at the rim of the uh, overhead tank so whenever the water hits this point then the motor turns off so wire which which comes from this sensor should be connected to the last connector this one. so at the bottom most wire comes to this particular connector and the last the top most wire comes to this particular connector. so this is only if you choose the option of tank overflow off so these are the only connections which has to be made we'll now be turning on the power supply we'll have a look at how the lcd looks like so this is how the lcd looks like you can see the incoming supply voltage here uh, then L and H are the uh, dry run and overload settings. Then on the second line you can see the digital current drawn by the motor. So right now it is 0, 0 because the motor is off. Then uh, this is the place for uh, demonstrating the uh, run time or the set time if the timer is on. So yeah. So let us assume the motor is on and uh, it's an 1.5 HP motor and it is, it is drawing around 9 ampere of current. So whenever the motor is drawing uh, any ampere of current it will be displayed on the second line. So uh, let us say the motor is running and it is drawing around 9 ampere. What is this L and H? L is low and H is high setting with respect to the current. So always L or the low setting should be set to one number below the motor uh, drawing current and H should always be set to two numbers above the motor drawing current. So for example, if the motor is drawing around 9 ampere, H should be set to 9 plus 2 that is 11 ampere and L should be set to 9 minus 1 that is 8 ampere. So how do we make those settings? So H and L settings can be made by looking at these knobs. So H or high setting can be made by uh, taking a tester and placing it on the green color knob on the right hand side and gently rotating on the left hand side will decrease this H number and rotating towards the right hand side will increase the H number. You can see the value of H increasing and decreasing here. So if you want to set H to 11, if it is drawing around 9 ampere, it will be 11 here. So here say smoothly rotating this knob until you get the desired value. Similarly, if you want to set the L uh, value, so the, you have the center knob which is called as dry run or L here. You will have to place this tester on top of this knob and rotate it towards the right hand side to increase the L value. Similarly, rotating on the left hand side will decrease its value. So if it is drawing around 9 ampere, 9 minus 1, 8 has to be set. So you are rotating until you reach this value and stop. This is the one time setting which has to be made. You need not uh, make these settings every now and then. So these are all. Uh, the settings with respect to dry run and overloading when it comes to off timer this has the built-in off timer so if you don't want the off timer you can always uh, rotate it towards the left hand side then the timer will be off if you want to set the off time then you'll take a tester and rotate it to rotate this white color knob on the right hand side you can see these numbers on the bracket so this is the off timing so if it is on 10 that means the motor is designed to or the the timer of 10 minutes has been set and the motor will run for only 10 minutes time. So this timer can be set to any value between 1 to 120 minutes. So the maximum time the motor can run is for 2 hours. So once the timer is set, you can anyways decrease this time to whatever value you want. So if you want the motor to run for only 30 minutes, then you can set it to 30 minutes. So turning on the motor will be manual. So 30, yeah, there you go, we got it to 30. So turning on the motor will be manual and after this 30 minutes time is up, the motor will automatically turn off and give out a re uh, the reason for switching off as timeout. Similarly, if the overhead uh, sensors are connected, so if the overhead tank fills up before this 30 minutes time, then the uh, motor again turns off and gives out a reason as tank full off. Uh, and another important feature about this timing is, whenever the motor is running, you can always come and see the uh, run time. 
So suppose uh, the, you've just started the motor and you come back after 10 minutes time and you want to know how for how long the motor has been running, you can always check the timings on the second line. So here, so this uh, the reading here uh, reads uh, uh, the uh, the elapsed time or the run time. So I hope the settings are all clear. So if you don't want the timer for uh, any reason, you can always switch it off by rotating towards the leftmost side. So all these are uh, 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 digitally controlled uh, uh, knobs, so it is always suggested to handle them uh, very uh, delicately. So we'll we'll go ahead and switch on the motor and we'll see how how uh, it looks on the display. So switching on will be done using this green color button. So once the motor is switched on, you can see this uh, red color motor on indicator. So now my motor uh, is taking a very uh, lesser load, so because of which the ampere is just one here. So again, uh, a one HP motor will draw around six amperes and one point five should draw around nine amperes and so on. So based on the ampere drawn by the motor, you can always set H to two numbers above this number and L to one number below this number. So we will see how the tripping takes place. Now we will be generating a dry run condition. So dry run always takes place whenever the current drawn by the motor is lesser than the set L value. So we are generating this case. I am setting H L to four. So the motor is currently drawing one ampere. You can see this warning light which is glowing, meaning the motor is running dry. And the motor switches off after 8 seconds time and the reason for switching off of the motor is given on the display as dry run off. Similarly when the motor uh, takes more current than the H value it turn off and the reason for turning off is given as overload and the reason for turning off because of the timer is given as timeout and similarly when the tank over a tank is full then the reason is given as uh, tank full off. So I hope uh, this video is pretty clear and uh, uh, the resetting feature again is automatic. I'm sorry, I uh, forgot to tell that. The resetting feature is automatic. So you are free to switch on the motor again. So as long as the current is in, in the range, the motor will continue to run, else uh, the dripping uh, will again take place. And for some reason, if you want to switch off the motor manually, you can always press this green color button, sorry, uh, the red color button to switch off the motor. I hope uh, uh, the whole working of uh, Eco ODVLR is clear. And uh, please get back to us if you have any queries. You can always reach us on double nine seven double two four three double seven four. I repeat, it's double nine seven double two four three double seven four. Or our uh, website address is www.narenelectrics.in. You can ha always have a look at our website to get info on any of our products. I repeat, it's www.narenelectrics.in. Thanks for watching this video.